I'm Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University, and I want to show you a few ways that I find academic literature and then um, talk a little bit about some um, APA type things that I do to make my life a little bit easier because it definitely is a hard style um, if you're brand new to it to get your arms around. So the first thing is that you're new to, to academic scholarship and you're not really sure how to find research studies that you're interested in. Okay, so you have a couple of different ways that you can go about doing this. You could use a general database um, or even Google Scholar uh, to start just typing out the topics that you're interested in. So, um, you know, maybe corporate social responsibility or public relations or, um, you know, uh, digital um, public relations, you know, mass communication, something very specific or something very broad. It's up to you. So, um, that is one way. Another way is that you could go directly to the, a journal that you know is leading in your field and you can just kind of almost like you would used to go and sit in the library stacks and take a book and kind of page through it to see uh, what different things were available. You can start to just kind of scroll through uh, the top journals in your field and then um, either search through that journal through its search function or just page through the different um, uh, issues that are posted to see if there's a topic or a paper that sticks out to you. Regardless of the approach that you use, in many cases, you're going to need to log in to your university's database to access the journal article um, when all is said and done. And so sometimes people do load their journal articles up in sort of like social networks for um, scholars like ResearchGate or um, uh, academia.edu. However, that's not always the case. And sometimes you actually have to kind of um, once you find a citation for a journal article, um, that gives you the location where that article is, but then you actually have to go find the article. You have to go to that location and download it. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, that more, um, you know, sort of like let's search and see what's out there kind of a process using Google Scholar. And then I'm going to show you how I use our university's database to get into specific journals to download a particular article. Um, so I am going to uh, start to look um, on Google Scholar, which is, as you might guess, scholar.google.com. Uh, it is all of the amazingness of Google and its search engine focused specifically on academic research. And so I'm interested in uh, corporate social responsibility, Corpor and it comes up, corporate social responsibility. And I can see a whole list of articles here that might fit what it is that I'm doing. So in particular, um, I actually uh, have um, a, an article in mind, but if I didn't, I could look over these and then I could try to figure out which one I wanted to go to. And then I could either hunt it down or in some cases, it looks like I can just access it right here on the sidebar. Um, so. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at one of these. I have no idea where this one is going to go. Um, and I click on this. It opens up. And it looks like it's not even a journal article at all. It's like a magazine article. Okay. Um, so what about something like this? The Strategic Management Journal, um, Corporate Social Responsibility and Financial Performance, Correlation or Misspecification. That sounds interesting. I can click on that. And it says it's gonna open a PDF for me. Let's see if it actually does, and it does. So this is the journal article. I can see the name of the journal article. Um, I can see uh, up here, I can see the name of the journal article. For some reason, it won't let me um, make it larger, but I can see the name of the journal article. 21 is the volume. Um, they don't have the issue number actually specified on this. However, I would want to do some more Googling to see if there's an issue number. It does give the page numbers and it gives the year. Um, so really good information here. And I could just download this um, to my hard drive and print it up or do whatever it is that I'm looking for. And that was really like the easiest way to find an article. 
Um, but let's say that I was actually interested in this new article that may not even be out yet, and it's by this guy named Dr. Browning, uh, Dr. Nick Browning. And let's see if I can get it to come up. Um, so I put in here corporate social responsibility and then Browning and I put his name and I, I don't see that article come up, but oh, I wonder if this link over here, N Browning, is that same Dr. Browning that I'm looking for. So one of the neat things that Google Scholar has is it actually has scholar profiles. And so it looks like if I click on this link, I'm gonna be taken to Dr. Browning's scholar profile. Um, before we do that, I do want to point out, I said ResearchGate and Academia.edu were two places that were the social networks that um, academics might hang their research, and you can see examples of that here. Um, so let me just click on N. Browning, and yep, look at that. That is Dr. Browning. He is at Indiana University, and this is the um, uh, scholar that I was looking for. And so what's really cool about this is once you tend to kind of get into a research topic, um, you see that, that scholars have this um, very intertwined and very related what we would call program of research. And so they tend to do a lot of the same types of studies just with different segments and, and looking at things slightly different ways as they build the knowledge in that area. And so if you really find an article that you're in love with, chances are that scholar has done something else which would also help your research. And so going to something like a Google Scholar um, page, profile page for um, that particular scholar may open up a whole list of other articles that you didn't even know existed. Um, so I'm looking, in, I'm looking in here for a specific article um, that is uh, about um, uh, advocacy. And I see that it's right here. Okay, so muting or meddling, um, advocacy as a relational communication strategy affecting organization public relationships. And so this is by Dr. Browning and it just came um, posted online um, in journalism and mass communication quarterly. Um, JMCQ, JMCQ is one of the um, best journals that we have in the public relations and mass media um, type of um, area. And so j having something in JMCQ is a really good hit and it means that it's really high quality research. And so this is gonna be a good article. I'm gonna click on it because it is a hyperlink. Okay, it brings up a little box. Let's see if I click again, what happens? Um, and it's gonna take me to the page that um, describes where I can find this. Now, I am not logged in to my university and I'm not on campus. If I were, I could probably just click download PDF. But because I'm not logged in and because I'm not on campus um, on that server, um, it is actually gonna try to make me buy the PDF. And I just don't wanna, I mean, I'm sure Dr. Browning's work is worth like 30 to $45 but I'm not really willing to pay that when I know I can get this for free. So um, I'm going to identify where this is published and then show you how to use your library's website to find this specific article. Um, so while I'm on this page, I do wanna point out that this would be a, a place where you might further understand um, other information that goes along with the article. And some of these web pages actually have a cite button where you can pick the different ways that you cite things. Now it's not always 100%. So I notice here in their citation, which they claim is APA, um, that they actually are not using proper APA because they are using um, title case in the name of the article. Um, whereas if I were to look at APA 7th edition, I would see that um, they would want me to use, APA wants me to use headline case. And so meddling would be lowercase, relational communication strategy affecting organization public relationships and stakeholder response would all also be lowercase. Um, so just make sure that you are um, doing due diligence in ensuring that if you are going to copy a citation like that, that you are looking it over to make sure that you have all the information that you need um, and that you are correctly citing it because that's a really big deal. All right, so I see that this is um, published. Let's see more. Show all authors. Okay, great. Um, this is published in Journalism and Mass Communication Quarterly. 
Um, it was just published online um, about a month ago. And so it doesn't have a ton of information like a, um, a volume number or an issue number. So let me go uh, and show you how using my university's website, um, I would, university's library website, how I would find this. So I'm going to go, I'm at library.sdsu.edu. I'm going to click on journals and I'm going to type in uh, journalism and mass communication quarterly. And then I'll press search. Now in a minute, it's going to ask me to log in um, because it's going to say like, hey, we don't know who you are. Um, we, need to, we need to verify that. I'm just going to click. I don't really know the difference between this one and this one and, and uh, any other versions of it. I'll just go ahead and click on the first one I have. It's going to ask me to log in at this point. Um, oh, at the next point, it's going to ask me to log in. Here I go. Um, I will log in with my SDSU ID. And it's going to take a hot minute to get there. And now I'm at the journals website. This is not considered um, a database. Uh, if uh, it, with regard to how APA wants you to cite things. This is still a journal. You're still using a journal article. So this is journalism and mass communication quarterly. Um, I can browse my specific um, issues uh, by looking here. I know that it, it's just gone online 2020. So let me go ahead and see if I can find it in this realm. Let's see if it has popped up yet. So far, no. And it's probably because it's an online advance. So it hasn't popped up. So let me go into um, back to publication information um, and search within the publication. Let me do um, Nicholas Browning to see if I can find him and then find that article. So I have the Do Ethics Matter. And it's actually not gonna show me that brand new one, even though it was an online advance. So I'm just gonna keep, uh, I know I've downloaded it before. I'm just gonna keep trying to see if I can find it. And it, I think they took it down because it was an online advance. Um, well, so that's kind of uh, horrible. Let's say instead of looking for the, um, the muted or um, meddling one, uh, let me just try the DOI real fast and see if I can get, if I do um, a DOI in here, if I can get that to make it pop up. It didn't like that. We'll go back, try a couple more things. Back to journalism and mass communication quarterly. And yeah, it's just not going to show me the ones that are in press um, here. But if I were looking for something else from Dr. Browning, then um, we'll go back, we'll go to his Google Scholar page, and we'll say uh, this one, Do Ethics Matter? Because it's in the same journal, Journalism and Mass Communication Quarterly. Um, so Do Ethics Matter? I see that it is in um, 96 and it was published in 2019. So I come back to the journal. I'm going to look in 2019. I'm going to look in uh, 96, um, which is the um, volume, 4, which is the issue. And then I'm going to look for uh, Dr. Browning. And here is his Do Ethics Matter. I'm signed into the library. 
So I should be able to get the full text of this article. Let me see all options. Let's try. I do see full text over here. Let me try that one. Find full text. Will it open up the full text for me? Here's to hoping. It wants me to sign in again. And I should be able to download paper. And now I have the paper. I, of course, I do need to download this to my hard drive. Um, so I would cite this as um, all of these authors. Um, here's the title. Here's the journal. It was in 2019. It was volume 96. It was issue four. And then those are the page numbers with it. Um, so that's one way that you use the um, library website in order to download the specific articles you want. I do want to talk about the APA style guide um, before we get uh, too much further on here. And so I have my APA style guide with all these amazing little flags on here because I, I know that I can look something up very easily, but it's a lot easier for me if I'm, you know, thinking through um, and have already decided what I know I'm going to need to know. So for me, the purple ones are the um, reference citations and reference citations are covered in the APA manual um, in uh, not only chapter um, eight, which talks about how to do the citations and, and references within the paper. Um, so that's really important. In particular, um, the number of authors to include in um, in-text citations, which is section number um, 8.17, is really important to me. And that's on page 266. And that kind of walks me through along with table 8.1 and how to do it in the front part of my paper. Um, but then when it comes to the back part of my paper and how to do actual citations um, to the articles that I'm looking at. Um, I go to um, chapter 10 and in chapter 10, uh, it's focusing on the back reference list. And so for the reference list, um, I can very easily see here uh, in section, um, uh, really, or item number um, one, so in 10.1, item one, um, as well as, um, uh, let's see, that item one, um, item one is a journal article with a DOI, and you should make every attempt to locate the DOI for your article. Um, and then that is when there is um, two authors. Uh, you should be able to do it the same way when you have three or more authors. And so you can use the exact same formatting there. So item one is one that I would write down and pay attention to. Um, item seven on the next page on 318, the journal article, which is an advanced publication. So the first one that I was trying to look for that um, uh, meddling or muted or muted or meddling by Dr. Browning that I couldn't find on the journal, that one is an advanced publication. So that's how I would... Um, Cite that one as item number seven. Um, there's something called in press, uh, which is different than an advanced online uh, publication. And then um, also uh, on page 320, it talks about how to cite in the reference list newspaper articles as well as blog posts. Um, there are other social media items as well. And then there are books, um, chapters within edited books. Um, unpublished dissertations or unpublished theses. Basically, every citation that you want to do um, has a rule and how you want to do it. And it's really important to me that you cite things correctly. Um, because if you don't cite things correctly, A, people can't find it if they need to find it. And um, you want to make life easy for the people who want to find it. And B, it's part of the style and the way that we write in academia. And so you need to get these small details correct. Um, I strongly recommend that at the beginning of any semester, you write out a citation in each of the commonly used um, types of media that you end up citing. And so that every time you have to do a citation, you just go back to your own created cheat sheet 
and you look at how everything is cited and then you can recreate the citation that you need using that. Um, I also want to point out that in the front cover of the APA manual, it gives us a like quick reference guide for not only the headers and subheaders and how you do that, um, but it also gives us in-text citation tips. Um, and uh, in the APA manual, um, starting on page 50, there are sample papers so that you can see how these particular um, uh, references and headers and formatting all appear out in the wild. And so I strongly recommend um, that you put a little flag on that one. Uh, of course, all my flags, because I have so many, are color coded. Um, and my color coded categories are statistics, paper formatting, grammar, um, and references. And so you can do it however it is that you want to do it. But when you're doing AP style, you got to do it right. So um, good luck on finding the research that you need to find on um, using the library websites and then citing that research correctly. Take care.